good people. <laughs> we're having, uh, hopefully we'll have some good people. Now. Anchovy. Anchovy. Anchovy, anchovy people. Anchovy kind of people. Yeah. We've got anchovies in the yeah, pizza man. shop. You do onions, anchovies, capers, a little slice of garlic. Mm. 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 I'm just saying. <laughs> you really do. <laughs> just about <laughs> hungry. Fresh tomatoes. Yeah. Just season them. Go there and get the, the Siciliano. That's oh. that's good. What part of uh, what part of Italy is your family from? Not the thirty seconds anyway. That's for a later discussion. Later discussion. The family matter. Oh. <laughs> well, I heard I, I emphasis on family. <laughs> family. Family. <laughs> I'll call this, uh, this special workshop meeting of the Jacksonville City Council to order, and we have with it, we have here tonight before each of you your places. You have a copy of the proposed agenda, and if you've had a time to look at it so far, uh, I would entertain a motion to adopt. So so move. Second. Motion to second. Discussion. Hearing none. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, the first topic on the agenda tonight will be the commercial garbage program update, and I will turn this over now to Dr. Woodruff. You can lead us into this item. Evening, Mayor, members of the council. Uh, first of all, we'd like to commend the mayor for the excellent job he did at the State of the Community meeting last Tuesday. Interestingly enough, we have uh, placed that video on the website of the city. As of uh, last week, the end of last week, we had over 7,000 hits. Mm -hmm. At this point, there has not been a contract signed by the mayor for, <laughs> for other auditions for movie rights. But um, I know that the public have benefited from that. And, Mayor, I know that the council appreciates the way you represented us. So very well done. So John and I would like to give you an update. Carrie and Wally are also here. They may want to make comments. So I'm going to ask Carrie if you'd like to come on up and sit with us so that he can join in the discussion. <laughs> Bigger target. <laughs> <clears throat> Over the next several weeks, we will be discussing commercial garbage, and we want to keep you right updated on what we have been doing. As you are aware, uh, last several weeks ago, we met with you and talked with you about some of the budget challenges. You will recall that at the last meeting of the City Council, we had a representative from Waste Management there, and we're going to discuss an update with you this evening. Waste management communication. We have met with waste management. Uh, John and I discussed with them the uh, comments that they made at City Council, and in a moment we're going to go through that in detail. We've also had communications with waste industries. You'll remember these are the two vendors who gave us a bid roughly a year ago for commercial service. So we have now met with both of those, uh, those companies. We've also begun the process of reviewing the franchise. As you will recall, when we went into the business a year ago, we had an exclusive franchise ordinance. John is going to talk to you about some changes that are going to be needed there. Kerry has had a number of meetings with the drivers. I have also met with the drivers to be right up front with them and talk with them about where we are. It is essential that we keep our personnel focused, but we also keep them informed because this is about certainly city service but to them it's about their livelihood and we want to make sure that we treat them in a very positive way and we keep them informed we've also begun to review the bid documents and we're going to be showing you especially next week some alternative language in the bid documents it's certainly not necessary for you to look at all 27 pages of the bid because things about when they're going to be turned in and so forth are more ministerial there are some philosophical points, though, that we'll be discussing with you next week to get guidance on some of the language and some of the alternatives. The staff has also been doing a lot of work. Carrie and Wally, especially Carrie, have been doing route analysis to really look at every customer to determine are they getting the level of service and are they getting that service on the day that they actually need it. From that analysis, we're already moving away from the heavy Monday-Friday schedules 
to schedules of Monday, Thursday, Tuesday, Friday. That's a much easier schedule for us to work. Rate changes, you looked at those last week and gave us uh, rate changes for the rest of this year. Staff has also been looking at the bid documents because the bid documents actually begin with Kerry and of course then with the uh, staff that's involved with uh, bidding any contract with the city. Kerry also has asked for driver input. He has met with the drivers to find out their perspective on what route changes are needed or what problems they may be having that are slowing down some of the uh, pickup services. We have begun to work on tire analysis. As you know, we have spent a lot more money on tires than we had anticipated. We've actually contacted tire distributors and we've also contacted other vendors who provide this service to find out are they using a different composite tire than we are, one that can get a whole lot more mileage. And we also uh, mailed to you uh, last week a potential list of a user group. This is not an ad hoc committee that uh, we would want council to appoint. On the other hand, we would like to see if you have any problem with this being a managerial ad hoc committee. The purpose of that ad hoc committee is to give us guidance on the bid documents, what they think is about service, any input that they may have. And we mail to you a cross-section of about 20 of our vendors. You will notice in that cross-section that most of them are local, very few of them are corporate. Now, why is that? If you, and I won't mention a particular name, but if you're a large box store, those, those bills and everything, they don't go to you here in town. They don't go to someplace out of state. So we were trying to find a cross-section of local vendors, or local customers rather, that we could meet with. And I wanted to get direction from you tonight as to whether you feel comfortable with us doing that, and if you have any additional names that you would like to have us consider adding, we will certainly be happy to do that. So from the standpoint of having a user group and convening it, you know, literally very quickly, we haven't contacted anybody yet. So if you're comfortable with that, we'll begin the process so that as we work with the vendors themselves on the bid documents, we can have their input. Is that something well, you're I was comfortable with? I was comfortable with the names that I saw and recommended. I feel like they would give you, uh, tr you know, accurate input. Uh. Well, some of the questions that we want to ask them are things <clears throat> such as this. What can we do from whether we're bidding it or not? Do you actually need twice a week pickup? If you do, then we need to know. If you don't need it, what do you think about it? What do you think about uh, the size of boxes that we're putting out there because it takes us just as much money to pick up an eight cubic yard dumpster as it does a two. Now it takes more to dump it at the landfill, but as far as driving to a store and taking the time to open the gates, you know, pick up the box, dump the box, close the gates back up, it's the same time whether it's a two, four, six, or eight cubic yard dumpster. So we want to try to get some input from them. Everybody comfortable with us? Yep. Yes. Okay. Anybody not comfortable with it? I'm not comfortable, but that's fine. Okay. <clears throat> you asked the city attorney the question, can the city award a contract directly to waste management now? John? The answer is yes. Uh, this is a service contract. You can negotiate it with one particular vendor or multiple vendors and come up with what you believe is the best uh, contract for the folks that have been served by it and uh, but it is not one that has to go out to bid however uh, you know uh, some things you can do legally but it necessarily it's not necessarily advisable uh, there was a reason you went out last time and got bids and was able to compare apples to apples so that you weren't looking at apples to oranges but the answer to the question is is yes you can uh, if that were Offer we're still on the table, which you'll find out in just a moment more about that. Now, because it is a service contract, as John said, you can go directly and negotiate with one party, or you could bid. One of the other decisions that we'll be, we'll be looking at a week or a meeting away, March the 3rd, is whether you're going to stay with an exclusive franchise or a non-exclusive franchise. And we're also going to be discussing with you the pros and cons of simply turning it over to the market and letting the market determine whether they 
uh, should supply those rates. When we talk about market service, some of the research we've already identified, it was research we knew before, but we've gone back and verified it, and that's this. Wilmington, Greenville, and Raleigh, they're not involved in the commercial system at all. They simply have a local ordinance that requires you must have your garbage collected. And then it's up to the individual store owner, the individual business, to set up a contract with whomever they want. Your ordinance can include in there a, a certain level of competency, if I may use that word, of the company that you are, are using. Waste management, waste industries, and a vendor called Pink Lady. They are the three primary carriers or providers of this service in Wilmington. And of course, as we said, you can do this by the free market vendor. Last council meeting, a representative from waste management spoke at the end of the meeting, and we, I believe that she said that she would like to get back into the business in Jacksonville. You can interpret exactly what she said to you. But on February the 11th, we met with representatives, including the young lady who testified to you. We asked them, if we go back out for bid, would they be interested in bidding? And they said, absolutely. We asked them, did they, did we understand them correctly that they are ready today to sign the contract that would have been awarded to them a year ago? They said, no. Now that's not quite the words that I heard, but that's fine. On the other hand, what they are willing to do is either go out for bid or negotiate with us directly they also suggested a proposal versus a bid approach. Now, let me explain to you what that is. A proposal is basically sending out a notice to individual vendors that says the city of Jacksonville wants commercial service. We would entertain a proposal from you on how you would provide service to a thousand customers or whatever the number is. They have done that in a number of places. The difficulty with that is how do you compare proposals? One of the things that we have decided might be a better way is to do what we call proposals and bids, not exactly getting proposals, but we've convened a meeting on February 24th, roughly a week away, and we've invited waste management and waste industries to that meeting. We're going to look at last year's bid documents. And we're going to walk through the bid documents literally paragraph by paragraph and say what paragraphs gave you a problem that resulted in your bid being what it was. You know, for example, the fact that we required a $400,000 bond, did that give you an issue or did it not? The fact that we had in there a minimum of two week service versus one week service, did that give you a problem or not? The fact it was exclusive versus non-exclusive. So we're going to get their input, and that's why I think the approach we recommend is what we would call a proposal and bids. The proposal is not really an RFP. It's we're meeting with the vendors to get their thoughts, what their proposed language would be. Then we will draft the bid documents, and we will discuss with you on March the 3rd the detail points that are really what I'm going to call the philosophical service level points. And then we will proceed to go with the bid documents. As I said, waste management is interested in bidding or negotiating. However, they are not interested in signing the contract that they would have been awarded. We also discuss with them the potential hiring of our employees and the potential purchase of equipment. They said in both cases that if the employees met their standards for drug testing and so forth, background checks, that they would certainly consider hiring them. They also said that if we would prepare a list of the equipment, that they would consider purchasing them. They said, of course, there's no guarantee that they would buy all of the equipment. Back up just a minute. Was that regardless of whether we went with them or contract or not? No, that would be if only they received the a bid. Okay. Yeah, only if they received a bid. Now, 
one of the things that they said was, you know, if you want to put in the bid document what our fees would be plus what we would pay you for your equipment, we would do that. And I said, no, no, we're, we don't want to do that. Because we don't want to be in a position just to make up a number that they're going to charge, you know, $6 a tip, but they'll pay us a half a million dollars for the equipment. And somebody else wants $7 a tip, but will pay us 800000 for the equipment. You need to divide those two. And we believe that in the end that we will be able to sell the equipment just on the open market. So the bid documents, when you see them, our approach is going to be almost identical, be a lot of different wording, but it will be a bid that says, for a tip, when you dump that dumpster, what is your bid, what is your cost per tip? We don't need to muddy that up with any other things. If they wind up hiring our employees, that's good. If they don't hire employees, then we're going to work on how we address that. Same thing with equipment. If separately they decide, okay, we have the bid, we will buy these two trucks, we'll negotiate a price. If we think we can get a better price somewhere else, we will do that. Waste management and waste industries both said, though, that all of the equipment, let me do that differently, the equipment waste management was using is no longer available for this market. It has now been sidelined or has been shipped to another location. So they will need to buy equipment. So they look favorably at the possibility of purchasing several of our trucks, probably not all five of them. Waste Industries, we met with them the next day, February the 12th. What they said was they will definitely bid, they would definitely interview our employees, and they would definitely consider purchasing equipment. But once again, they are saying all of that is conditioned based upon review. The bid documents, on March the 3rd, we will bring to you the key points in the bid documents. And those are going to be things that talk about exclusive, non-exclusive. They're going to be things such as the, uh, whether they can or cannot um, uh, be responsible for the billing. You will see options in there. Service approach, billing and collecting, and then other key points. What are our next steps? Well, we need to complete the bid documents, which we're doing now. We need to complete our review of the franchise revisions, which will be needed. We will continue to do additional research on some of the issues that we are working on, <clears throat> and we'll have the user group input. And then, of course, we will continue to have <coughs> council updates. In all cases, we have to be in a position to know by the end of March whether we are going to bid or not. It is my recommendation to you that you do go to bid. Now, once you get the bids in, then you can look to determine, okay, are you going to go with company A, company B, company C, or are you going to stay in the business? That will be up to you. But I do believe it's essential that you go to bids. The other thing that, they, that both waste industries and waste management said was this. <coughs> It's going to take them, from the time they get a contract signed, it's going to take them 90 days to be in business here. So, you know, we have time to do it, but we don't have time to, <coughs> to waste, if I may use that term. We have to move expeditiously on this matter. Now, John, you were in those meetings. Anything we... No, sir, the, the only thing that I'll say, uh, is that it was back on March the 4th, 2014, that after two workshops, according to the agenda item, that the council adopted a very comprehensive ordinance that's in our book of ordinance code book. And in that, of course, you set forth that it was uh, your intent to protect health and private property by granting exclusive franchise to the city of Jacksonville. So if you follow uh, what Richard's talking about, and you do go out to <coughs> bid, and after you get the bids back in, you decide to go with a private hauler, on a, either an exclusive or non-exclusive contract, we'll have to do some modification to the ordinances in the book presently. Additionally, we talked about at that time that the waste management uh, contract, everyone had <coughs> presumed that it was an exclusive contract, but in fact it was not. It was just purely a non-exclusive contract with that vendor. To make it either exclusive or non-exclusive, there is a additional ordinance that needs to be adopted. It's a franchise ordinance. As you recall, you've done this with uh, the cable companies, 
You've done this with uh, Progress Energy, I think, prior to Duke taking it over as a franchise. But again, you have to adopt a franchise ordinance, uh, and it has to have two readings. Uh, and anyway, there's a procedure that you'd have to go through there. But again, it can all be handled. It's just a matter of uh, working through the process, for y'all giving us direction after you get all the information uh, as to what, uh, how you want to proceed. <coughs> That's our update for the question. moment. Can we answer questions? Maybe I missed it, but when you were talking about Wilmington, Raleigh, and Greenville having an open market on, who does the billing? They do it themselves. Each company Each does company it. Each company does yes, the sir. billing itself. Okay. I mean, in in those cities, it is truly no different than uh, than buying gasoline at a you know at a store or buying a pizza. <clears throat> A very good pizza, by the way. Their history does their history indicate that they may, they may have moved in that direction from where we're at, or a similar position. I don't know about each city. I know that uh, Chip Dodd told us, and the young lady from Waste Industries was uh, Norma Yanez, I believe is where you pronounce her name. Uh, apparently, the city of Wilmington has been doing this for a long time, just as private vendors. I don't know, Carrie, do you know whether Greenville uh, used to pick it up uh, with, through a government contract or whether, do you have any knowledge there? No, sir, I don't. Okay. Just curious, yeah. Mm -hmm. We may be able to find that history out for you, Mayor and Council. Any other questions? I did share with you the, uh, I think it's about an eight-page paper from Richard Wilson at the School of Government. Uh, I highlighted some of the things that I think you need to pay special attention to. I know the manager has sent out an a, uh, email which contained a letter in reference to the billing and some issues there. You need to read that and, again, ask us questions if, on any of those things if you have any, any questions or concerns. Actually, that, that email will be going out tomorrow. I'm sorry. I'm still waiting for uh, some information from finance to show the actual. Make sure you read it when you get it. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I understand. Well, you know, not to belabor this or anything, but I know that we moved towards the city taking, that, taking over that uh, duty uh, as a result of complaints that were made. Uh, or service, you know, problems from uh, different businesses in town. Uh, and my, you know, from what I recall, the reason we moved in that direction was because of service. Yes, sir. It wasn't because of uh, any other reason, right? Well, it was definitely service. I think Quality that service. it also was the fact that you were assuming that the vendor that whether it's us or whomever, would be getting a reasonable price. Mm -hmm. I know that what drove us as a management was the fact we were not satisfied with service level, and we felt we could meet that service level and exceed it, and I believe you would agree we have. I think the other side of it, though, is we believe that we could accomplish that at a figure that we have not been able to accomplish it. What would, uh, wouldn't it, uh, could we not get something maybe to show some pros and cons as to whether or not we should even be in it, period, even with the billing? Uh, On the, yes, sir. And let it be a, a total private sector uh, function? We, on the third, uh, on versus, the versus other mixes or, or, you know, like us billing and contracting out, et cetera. You know, what would be yes, the sir. pros and cons of each of those alternatives? Yeah. We will have that on March the 3rd when we share with you some of the questions in the bid document. Any other questions, Council, before we move on? 
know you enjoyed Carrie's uh, presentation, but I'll ask you. <laughs> <laughs> you have anything else? No, sir. <clears throat> Again, I, I will tell you that uh, Carrie is to be commended for the dedication that he has made to make this a success. While financially it hasn't been what any of us have wanted, I will tell you from a service level standpoint, he is the one who has made that happen, and I, I publicly commend him for what he has done. So, I just have a, have a, a, a philosophical thought. If we go, let's just say we go the route of Wilmington and Raleigh and just go open market, is it then more difficult to turn back around and say, no, we're going, we, we're going to take that function back away from private industry and say we're going to have we're going to do the bid process for folks that live within the the city is that it might be more difficult politically or for some other thing but legally you are empowered to do that uh and again you would have that after some due notice and but you end up then mr warden in the displacement statute as you recall that's an eight i believe it's 18 months that you would have that you have to uh, again uh, compensate or either give them 18 months to close up shop, if you will, and so forth. But legally, it can be accomplished uh, down the road. But we will cover that in the pros and cons. That's a good point I hadn't thought of because you you will recall when we got into the business, we had to notify, even though everybody thought it was exclusive and it wasn't. We still had companies serving on Saturdays that were not serving Monday through Friday because our agreement with waste management was only a Monday through Friday. So we had to contact those companies and offer them a displacement arrangement. Now fortunately, because there were only about a dozen containers being picked up on Saturday, they basically said, no, we, we just as soon be out of the business. But that is going to be one of the points on free market is once you set up the free market, if you decide to go back into franchising, you will have a displacement issue. Mm -hmm. What we have found in Wilmington, based upon information that the waste industries folks said, is the market is basically split about 40, 35, 25. Does that work out to 100, sir? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it does actually. So, you know, you have to, once you get into the free market, you will probably find a similar mix up here. So, to move back to a franchise arrangement, even if it's a private vendor working through a city franchise, you would most likely have a much larger displacement issue. I, I, would, I would be curious to know whether the user group would favor a free market or if they would prefer to to be in a franchise situation mm -hmm. yeah. and and you know I don't know I, I don't know truthfully I don't know whether you've got time to do all the research that you probably need to do this is not an easy decision because you you sort of set a precedence if you whatever we do although we were backing up and going a diff different direction after a year <coughs> but um, that free market decision is a is a interesting decision one it gets out of gets the city out of the billing uh, gets us out of worrying about customer customer uh, service complaints. How that, however, though, it also puts us in a position of of having to police a little bit if somebody doesn't get their their trash picked up. If somebody decides that they uh, you know want to cut corners and not not get, maybe they need to trash picked up twice a week, but they only contract once a week. You know, there's some issues there and. Uh, you know how much how much cost savings is there by going to a franchise versus a free market for the for the users let me ask this question in the event that that does take place and let's say you have some commercial customers that don't pay their bill obviously their trash is not going to get picked up you know who who picks that trash up if the customer is not able to pay and they continue to pile and pile and pile and then you have uh, adjacent uh, commercial uh, customers complaining to the city, obviously, probably. It becomes a code enforcement so what issue. What we have learned through our contacts with the other cities is that's handled through code enforcement. The difficulty with code enforcement, obviously, is no different than, than high grass. Uh, it requires a 30-day remedy period, and, you know, sometimes for... But I will also say to you that uh, what we have been told is that that's really not a frequent occasion. When it does happen, yes, it's a mess, but it's not a frequent occasion. 
I guess we could still do a franchise and have them responsible for the building and just, just get completely away from the building. Yes, one of the options that you will see on March the 3rd is going to be to issue a franchise where the city continues the billing and collecting. Secondly, that the city turns the billing and collecting over to the vendor through a franchise. So basically you're going to have a matrix that says exclusive, non-exclusive, city bill, billing and collecting, vendor billing and collecting. And what are the rates for those four? If you remember the last time we had the bids go out, we asked this question. Exclusive franchise, what do you bid? Non-exclusive, what do you bid? Mm -hmm. You remember that uh, they each gave a bid for each category. In this particular case, you'll probably be asking for them to fill in four numbers instead of two, if you go that route. Well, going back to Council Member Warden's uh, question there about what, what happens when it starts piling up, I'm sure that even with the system that's been in place now, we have people that are, have uh, been delinquent on their bills, right? The water gets cut off, so yeah, they, don't have, they won't be making tracks <laughs> after that. That's, that's a good point. It doesn't happen too often. Yeah. So I guess that, that does uh, put a little teeth into it, doesn't yeah, it? Does. There, there aren't very many who, uh, who don't pay their bills. Okay. And of course, that's been one of the benefits to the vendor is they've been guaranteed 100% uh, collection from a financial standpoint. Plus, plus they, they don't have to have the overhead of, of setting the billing system up and, and the expense of, of sending the bills out. and. Perhaps collecting or, or going to going to small claims court when somebody doesn't pay or mm -hmm. sending somebody out knocking on the door saying hey you, you, you owe us money perhaps they should be sh shooting a little bit more uh, a little bit of cash back our way well you know bill. is there I mean know, I, they do that with on loss I mean uh, on some of their collections don't they as far as when they're collecting for some of these other things I think they take payments think from other. Built into the rate. Yeah, but it's still going to fall back to the consumer yeah. if you do. Well, that's true. If it's you do it the rate, it's going to yeah. fall. I think what it boils like down to is two, gonna, two, two different consumer, rates. So you're not really helping the, no, you're the not. business. A rate for us continuing the billing and a rate for not. I mean, there's got to be if it if it leads to a lower rate for the consumer and we do the billing and have the ability to keep things. Um, under control, then there's, that's a benefit in itself rather than not. Well, we'll be looking at the pros and cons of those approaches, and uh, we did talk with them, with both vendors, about billing and collecting. Both said that they already do billing and collecting with all their other systems. The only issue really is going to be uh, whatever the postage fee is, and some several of them have large account postage uh, negotiated. So, but we'll bring you more information. I just have a question. Yes, sir. What's the schedule for the ad hoc committee? Well, we have not done anything because you have not approved doing it until tonight. Okay. We're going to get on the phone tomorrow morning, and the schedule has to be now. We have to get information from them, whether that's through joint meetings, which I'm sure we're going to try to set it up, or whether it's through some limited questionnaires. You know, we, we have to gather this data within the next two to three weeks. Okay. So it, this it, is a self-imposed deadline based <coughs> primarily on budget considerations? Is that what you're saying? Well, it, it's based upon the fact that if you're going to have a franchise, if you're going to turn it over to a vendor on July the 1st, they have to have 90 days to get everything in place. Now, the longer well, I'm we're... I'm saying why not August 1st or something? You could do any, any date you want as long as we understand the financial consequences to the city. Okay. I don't quite understand all the details about the ad hoc committee, but I, I would be interested in a, just a survey of the users. On, and I don't know if that's quicker than setting up a committee that has to have a meeting. Or, you know, or use those guys as the, the users, that the ones that you send the questionnaires to, if, if it's a good representation. Or all of them. It doesn't have to be, I mean... We because can. it's not that many that we couldn't send at all, or in the water bill or something. Well, you definitely don't want to wait for the water bill. Mm -hmm. Right, that's right. Yeah. That's 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 right. right. How many accounts are there? You're, you're talking about 860 businesses, and, and some of those businesses, again, as Dr. Woodruff mentioned, they, they don't do business here in Jacksonville, so you'd be sending it off to maybe another state, another corporate yeah. office. Mm -hmm. So it, it's, you know, I don't know the likelihood of you're getting 
a lot of those surveys back from the corporate offices. Also, you have vendors that broker the garbage collection service, so the, the survey may not go to the, to the vendor that's paying for the service. It may go to the broker who's brokering the service, and they're not going to know a great deal about the service itself. Yeah, one of the things, you know, again, not uh, as you can appreciate, uh, a, a community like Jacksonville has, has everybody from uh, from the husband and wife who run the store to corporate accounts. You could raise the fee today to seven dollars and seventy-five cents, and well over two-thirds of your accounts would never have a complaint. Why? because those accounts are paid for in some other city because they belong to a national chain store and they're already paying rates that are a lot higher than what your rates are. For example, in Wilmington, their rate just for tipping at the landfill is $20 a ton higher than here. And that's not a rate that you have anything to do with. But if you compare the, the cost of a tip in Wilmington to a cost of a tip in Jacksonville for a national corporation, it's just an expense to them. I mean, really, it's just an expense to them. The people that we really need to get input on, we, that's why we've tried to identify, you know, these 20 or 25 that are fairly local that we think can give us input that, that actually means something to Jacksonville, if I can use that term. Okay. So we look for a one or two session meetings, and that's about it? Yes, sir. I would think so. Yeah. And I've actually had some to drag it on. Business, local business people call me up and say, whatever you do, don't give it back to the private sector. I've had the Raise the calls. rate. Yeah. And, and I mean, I, and you would be surprised who those people are. That's that's what I want to know, and I'd rather it be a little more scientific than mm -hmm. anecdotal. I just want a little yeah. kind of scientific survey, or what you're doing is fine, but that's a question I would like to know. Yeah. Matter of fact, I have <laughs> shared that with you. We will. We. You're right, Mr. Bittner. We we do not have a deadline. We have to meet as long as we all understand the consequences of whatever deadline we we select. The important thing is that, as you can see, uh, Carrie and John and others are moving to gather as much information as possible to put you in a position as quickly as we can so you can begin to give us direction. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Anything else on that? We good with what you need from us on that? Yes, sir. Uh, Deanna Young is going to come up and, and give you uh, more information regarding the capital improvement budget. It will be adopted at the same time you adopt your regular budget, which is most likely going to be a May goal, and we're going to talk to you that in just a few minutes. But Deanna, if you'll talk to him about uh, the capital improvement program for this year. Thank you. Good evening. So just as a review, um, the Capital Improvement Planner, the CIP, is a five-year planning document that we utilize to help prioritize and evaluate the needs and desires of the city. So we normally focus on the current fiscal year. In this case, it's fiscal year 16 because that's the year that receives the actual funding or um, expenditure. And the, the outlying years are the planning years that helps us evaluate the projects if they come closer into the current fiscal year. So here's a comparison over the last three fiscal years. This represents the total five years. So in FY16, we are, pro we are proposing 71 projects. Over the five years, these 71 projects, they're not all new projects. There's a very small number. The majority of these projects are projects that you have previously seen in prior CIPs. As we talked about in January, this is a review of some of the projects that we're currently working on and will continue to work on in FY16. And in this particular project, um, you can see that the Sturgeon City Civic and Environmental Project is showing a prior, prior year expenditure of $506,000. In reality, the, this prior year expenditure, these aren't actual costs at this point. These are estimated costs of what we believe we might be spending between now and the end of this fiscal year. So on this particular project, we have advertised a contractor pre-qualification application 
which will be coming back in March. And we're hoping if the state um, provides some concurrence that we can go out for bid um, in April or May timeframe. And again, along with the Parkwood Regional Lift Station and Force Main and the Western Trunk Sewer, again, those are not actual expenditures as of yet. Staff is working on refining the proposed scope for um, engineering services to begin this year. And these are um, three more projects that we're working on. The Lejeune Trail and Greenway pot project is currently out for bid with bids being received March 5th. And again, that's an estimated cost of what we are hoping we'll spend between now and the end of the fiscal year, which will probably be, be uh, decreasing because we went out for bid a little bit later than what we anticipated initially. The Jacksville Landing project at $1.7 million, that's an actual cost. That project is complete, and we are proposing in FY16 to begin the engineering and design for the proposed Welcome Center. So some of the new projects that we have slated or have identified for FY16, we have our annual sidewalk installation project and our street rehabilitation project. Both of those projects are funded with Powell Bill funding. What has changed as in prior years, the sidewalk installation budget was 180,000. Over the last several years, we have concentrated our efforts on infill development that has been very successful. So we have reduced that overall project budget by 80,000 and reappropriated it to the street rehabilitation project. And then we're gonna talk about the solids dewatering bed and the emergency water and interconnection in just a minute. So on the street rehabilitation project, we've given you some updates on um, the new method that we're looking at, the types of rehabilitation, either a mill and overlay or cement stabilization, et cetera. And uh, with that, we have actually changed the way we have budgeted for this project. In the past, we've identified street segments and appropriated a cost for that. Um, and so the project estimate has varied year to year. Beginning this year, we have identified a constant project, but overall project budget of 830,000. The hope is as we finish up prior street rehabilitation projects, any project balance that might remain will be reappropriated and rolled into the current fiscal year for the street rehabilitation. This would allow us greater flexibility in identifying more segments than what we initially um, identified and hopefully we can stretch our dollar just a little bit more. So these are the street segments that we've identified for fiscal year 16. And out of these 16 projects, nine of them are considered C streets and four are considered E streets. Again, continuing council's desire to focus more on the C streets and not so much on the, the D and E streets. On that though, your capital improvement program will not actually list the streets. We want to make sure that we have flexibility. If bids come in higher or lower, we <clears> want to be able to adjust the list. And therefore, the capital improvement document that you will adopt will have a monetary value, but it will not have a list or an inventory. That will be provided uh, to you prior to us awarding the bid so that you can agree on the inventory. The solids dewatering bed or facility at the land treatment site, um, this project, we currently, as we remove the grease and sludge from our lift stations, um, we are, uh, the quantity that we're receiving that we, let me back up, I'm sorry. The, the sludge and the, the grease that we are currently receiving or, or removing from our lift stations, we were utilizing the drying beds at the Hunter's Creek area. Um, Onwasa was allowing us to use that facility. Unfortunately, the state has identified that that's, that option is no longer available. And as a result, we, have, we would like to consider constructing a drying, uh, a dewatering facility. This will allow the, the items that the sludge and grease that we receive to um, re dry out on the water, the, the bed and therefore it reduces the water content which results in a lower hauling cost and disposal cost. And this would be constructed again at the land treatment site? Yes, and we, we haven't identified a location as of yet at the land treatment site, um, but staff is evaluating alternative options 
um, to offset some of the operational costs, such as partnering with others. The emergency water interconnection is a joint project with the Marine Corps base. We are looking at extending a water line that's on Iwo Jima Boulevard, which is located between the two Terroir Terrace entrances on Marine Boulevard. So um, Marine Boulevard is here and that we're looking at putting um, a vault box here that would connect, connect from the Marine Corps base property um, to the city's water line. This project is a prior project that the base in, this, in Anwasa in the city had jointly looked at back in 2008. Um, just recently, the, I think last May, that the base contacted us and asked if we were interested in, in starting this project, this partnership again. So right now the project is uh, proposed for, for design by the Marine Corps base, but we're still working out some of those details. Construction would be in fiscal year 16, and that this project is funded in part by the Marine Corps base. So some new projects that we've added you know, to continue in the FY16 is the Blue Creek School Road Water Improvements Phase 1 the rehabilitation of, of Black Creek Wells, and this is actually a smaller project where we re rehabilitate two existing wells and the Commerce Road extension. The Blue Creek School Road Water Improvement Project is an area, um, to, it's a project to extend water to an area that we've identified as possible light industrial. So roughly, kind of this area is what we've identified as the possible area. We've got a um, existing sewer in the vicinity here with the Southwest Regional Pump Station. This project would consist of extending a water line that's near Yop Road and NCDOT's headquarters for Division Three up here. And roughly, the water would come down this way and kind of up to Blue Creek School Road. This is a new project for FY16 and the, the Additional funding for this project would be a preliminary engineering to evaluate if what we're thinking is possible really is. Um, and What's the purpose of the project? Twofold. Number one is to expand the city limits in that direction because this property is currently not in the city and to set up the potential for light industrial park in that area. Now, we have been in contact with the property owners out there. They are interested in doing that. We believe that that would give us uh, almost pad-ready sites with water and sewer that could give easy access for construction, although we certainly miss the major construction projects at the base. But that would be to expand the city limits and to provide uh, other industrial, light industrial opportunities in that area. The um, proposed Commerce Road extension, again, this is a, a project that's been discussed um, in le at length in, in other um, agencies. This project consists of constructing um, the Commerce Road extension, would, which would parallel Marine Boulevard. We currently are working with the developer for the installation of this signal, along with construction of the extension of the road to roughly about this area, with the hopes as development occurs in the outline area this way, that the, that part of the Commerce Road extension would be constructed by developers. The project that's in the CIP for um, FY16 would look at the possibility of constructing this portion of the Commerce Road extension. Um, this would be a partnership between NCDOT and the city of Jacksonville under the Strategic Transportation Investment Program. For FY16, where uh, staff is looking at using the MPO funds to conduct a feasibility study with um, potential of this project in f future outline years for construction four or five years out. Did you have to buy those houses that you run past in Country Club? Or? Yes, sir. In, in order to make the connection there, it is likely you're going to have to purchase at least one, if not more than one. Yeah. But that is, if you look at the uh, strategic plan that the MPO has put together, one of their uh, goals several years ago was to redevelop the intersection of Piney Green and 17. The more we looked at the flyovers and everything that they talked about there, the more 
we realized that just was not something that was in the benefit of the city. So one of the subsequent studies showed a series of parallel roads that could relieve some of the traffic off of 17, and that would be the purpose of commerce. As you know, commerce currently crosses west, you know, crosses western and goes to a point that's fairly close and dead ends. What you also know is with the development of the Toyota dealer and other properties that Bailey and others are developing there, there is the requirement for them to build the extension from Piney Green further out. So that leaves an area, you know, pick a number, a thousand feet long, whatever it is, that has to be eventually connected. And so this will begin the feasibility study for that. But you are correct, it will have impacts on some residential properties. And then outside of the funding year, these are some additional projects that we've added to the proposed CIP. As a result of the advisory committee summit meetings, we've added the three splash, three park splash pads and the downtown rails to trail greenway. Um, they're not in FY16 as, as you had previously requested, but the book was already published. Um, we also, you can see that we have a, a focus on the Northeast Creek Park with um, two shelters and restrooms, we've got a playground, and then in um, the consideration of the bulkhead and, and boardwalk replacement. Now one of the splash pads, like Deanna said, the book when it was published was published before you had your input session. One of those splash pads will be moved forward into the FY16 budget. And we also, uh, Lily Gray in putting together her budget, has said that there may be some community development block grant money which could offset at least a portion uh, provided that that splash pad is built in a target area and so we will be bringing you more information on that. And some additional projects that were added, uh, we've discussed the New River Waterfront Boardwalk Replacement Project that's in combination with the conversion that Mr. Carter is working on it in, for that parcel, uh, the Zipline Park, location yet to be determined, a water supply wells, and um, again, Richard Ray, our America <coughs> Park walk, walks and shelter. So as Dr. Woodruff had stated, the additional council workshop as, as needed, we'll continue looking at our the available funding <coughs> and project management, and then prepare for the final CIP or, or further discussions with council. I have a question. Um, I didn't see the um the potential for the fence replacement for the cemetery. Are we not including that as a potential project? No, and here's the reason why. The, we are going to be doing the project. Because the money, well actually John, you won't explain it since it's a legal <laughs> arrangement. <laughs> the, the thought here is that the house can never be sold, which is the main component of the estate, that the fence would uh, be installed and paid for by the estate and you would not have some bidding issues and things of that nature that would would have to accompany if it was then turned out and again there's got to be with the clerk's office and i'm talking about not this clerk but the the clerk of superior court's office there's got to be some accountability that this money has been uh spent the way mrs covid wanted to be spent and so forth so we felt like that's the best way to proceed with that project and just to give you a little bit more of an update Approximately 30 days ago, we thought we had the house sold. Unfortunately, that did not work out. <coughs> At the same time, we have now concluded meetings with the committee, including the executor of the, of the estate, to identify the quality of the material and are beginning the final work to look at how that could be installed with final design. So while it's not in your capital improvement, it is our intention, as soon as the house sells, to have that project what about the detention ponds downtown? The detention ponds downtown, if you will uh, remember, several of them are in the Sturgeon City project and we're moving forward with them. But the larger detention <coughs> facilities downtown, you will remember we have eliminated those because we do not get any credit. We, we discussed <coughs> Diener's uh, thoughts on that. And okay. It's in do oh, yeah. We do have some it's in something the fiscal year. Well, There's something out for getting ready to come out for bid though for yeah. the downtown. <coughs> those are the yeah. ones for it's it's in the fiscal year 15 CIP and those are 
the reduced number of ponds that are under that capital project. Those are primarily related to Sturgeon City. Sturgeon City, I was going to say, I know the right. impact Sturgeon. It's actually on the, it's it's on the agenda. Tonight. And the primary purpose of that is we have overloaded uh, drainage lines in that area? No, sir, these are primarily uh, twofold. Number one is water quality, not quantity. And then the other, you know, is there, there are two ponds associated there. One that's generally at the corner of Court and uh, Loyola. 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 Okay. Okay. And that one is a water quality pond. And the other one will assist with some of the drainage off of the site from Surgeon City. Again, that was just an overview. You will see, um, you know, the entire book is there. As we go through the budgeting process, we'll be asking you to take formal adoption. The one, only one change that we would recognize tonight again is based upon your session of several weeks ago. You wanted a splash pad included in FY16, and we will move one, one pad accordingly. Mayor, if it's okay, we could take a few minutes break, and then we will come back and have one other item. All right, we'll stay recessed. Okay.